How many humans does it take to make our trash into something useful again? America produces almost 300 million tons of waste every year, and only about a fourth of that is ever recycled. Across the country, thousands of workers are sorting our discarded bottles, cardboard boxes, and empty containers every day to keep our oceans clean and our landfills empty. But sorting through that trash doesn't pay well, isn't easy, nor is it even particularly safe. Some people believe there may be another solution, with a little help from a robot. You walk into one of these facilities and the need for automation is just obvious. So at Amrobotics, we're using robotics and artificial intelligence to solve some of the primary challenges of the recycling business. Most people in robotics that I knew thought it was a terrible idea. Skeptical the systems could solve this problem. Sometimes the experts aren't always right, and um, just thought, I, I think it'll work, I gotta give it a shot. We are a single stream residential MRF. A MRF is a materials recovery facility. The plant runs at about an average of 32 tons per hour. So you can imagine every hour we're doing about one and a half tractor trailer full of recyclable materials through the plant. Roughly 10 to 12 percent of what comes through the plant is not recyclable. Bowling balls, skis, lots of fabric, dirty diapers. That one's never fun. It's a tough place to work. It is a loud and dusty environment. You are subject to the elements and the fact that you're standing on your feet all day at a conveyor belt. It can take some adjustment for, for people to get started. Dizziness and that sort of thing. You know, turnover is relatively high to Murphy. We can't always get the numbers we need. That's where robots really help. What's really new about our approach is the use of artificial intelligence to teach these systems to identify all of these different materials, whether they're bottles, cans, whether they're smashed up, or whether they've got food on them. And what this lets us do is use these robots and install them in existing recycling facilities with almost no change to their existing operations. In the United States, recycling is not achieving its full potential. Not even close. Not even close. We could be doing easily three times as much as what we're doing. 44% of our nation's production of greenhouse gases comes from our products and packaging. So that means that it represents the largest portion of what we're creating but it also means that it represents the largest portion of what we can do to reduce our greenhouse gas consumption. People don't look to the lowly glass bottle or aluminum can and think, oh, that's an opportunity for me to save energy and save greenhouse gases, but it is, and it's huge. The current recycling movement started in the 1970s. Now remember, 1970 was the first Earth Day. The country must settle down now to the long, hard job of actually building a better environment. The job will require all of us, in government, in industry, and throughout the private sector. By the 1980s, most states had curbside programs, and now I would say our task is not so much to completely renovate recycling, but to upgrade it. Welcome to our lab. So what you'll see is a, a bunch of conveyor belts all arranged in a loop. Uh, so the material can just go around and around. We can test systems for weeks solid if we want to. We have aluminum cans from Spain, electronic waste from California, coffee pods, you name it. So this is the data that we'll use to test the performance of the system, try new things out. In front of the robot, we have a vision system and it's looking down at the conveyor belt. That video feed goes to a computer. The computer actually does the identification and says, okay, that's a bottle, that's a can. It then uses that information to send commands to the robot. And the robot says, okay, the vision system saw a can. That's coming at me. It'll be within my range in one or two seconds, so I'll be ready to pick. The robot has a vacuum gripping system. It's gonna reach out to the aluminum can, 
pick it up and then throws it into a trash can or a bunker and then it's on to the next piece of material. In a typical recycling facility, you might have one to two dozen people sorting material or doing some kind of work. Our robots can automate roughly three quarters of those different sorting tasks. A good pick count for a human sorter would be about 50 picks per minute. You know, sustainable, 45, 50, we're, we're, we're happy with that. If they're in the 20s, we typically try to work with them to get them up a little bit more. These systems we sell as being able to do about 80 picks a minute. A person can get up to 80, but it's really hard for them to stick at 80. For every 100 pounds of material that you collect at the curb, you will end up with 75 pounds of material that can be turned into a usable product. So that's a loss rate of 25%. One out of every three aluminum cans that is put in a curbside recycling bin never makes it into an aluminum bale. It gets missorted. You know, trying to seek efficiency, they try to push as much material through a facility as they can, and it's hard for the workers to keep up with that. Definitely these facilities are a combination of machines and human beings, and it's a hard job for human beings. I've always been interested in robots ever since I started watching Saturday morning cartoons. Things like Transformers and Voltron, I just always thought robots were the coolest thing. Went to Caltech to study for my PhD, which has a, a great robotics program. I did some things where I was hacking Roombas and trying to get them to cooperate. But what I saw was in recycling, the whole industry was being held back by these core challenges. And if you could develop a vision system that could identify material, even though it's been smashed and folded and dirty, you could deal with those core challenges and you would unlock a whole lot for the industry. This is our manufacturing center. This is where we put together the robot systems. Maria, what are you doing? <laughs> What's that? Tagging. Tagging. What are you doing? I'm just talking, pretending I know what you guys are doing. Some of the best years of my life were spent inside recycling facilities, figuring out the right combo. You know, it's things like you find out milk jugs, if the caps on them, are really strong. <laughs> Getting the technology working was not easy. When I walk into a MRF today, they still look like that one <laughs> from 30 years ago. And I'm always a little shocked by that. If we don't improve, I think that recycling will slowly die out. If you visit a recycling facility, you will almost always see a now hiring sign out front, whether or not our robots are there. If they were not there, we're short as is. So we would be even further shorthanded if we didn't have the robots. When climate strategists look at and present a report on all the menu of options of what we can do to address the climate disaster, climate catastrophe, it's on the no-brainer list. You can save a ton of greenhouse gases and it pays for itself. Why would you not do that? I believe robotics and artificial intelligence are going to drastically change the structure and the economics of the industry. So I feel a lot of pride in the, the team we built that actually lets us get beyond one or two robots and has now gotten us to over 150 robots. You know, you start something, you hope it's going to work, then you start to see it's really working. And you say, oh my gosh, like, these potential impacts, they're, they're real. And so, what we hope is you'll see recycling become a bigger and bigger part of how waste is managed.